Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm here today to do an intermediate advanced functional reformer workout. I have done a beginner reformer workout, so if you haven't done that yet, please look at that. Master the skills that we go through in that workout so that you're ready to progress into what we are going through today. So functional training is really about getting our gait patterns really working well. So single sided leg work, trunk rotation, and then getting the movements that we would need for day to day life squatting, bending, pushing, pulling, rotating, lunging. So I try and take the classical repertoire and make it a little bit more unilateral and a little bit more rotational and one-sided. So I hope you enjoy this workout. We're gonna to start today with our foot bar up and we're gonna be standing on the carriage for elephant as our first exercise. I've got a red and a blue on this reformer, so a medium tension, so that you can push the carriage easily back and forth without it feeling strained. So let's stand up. We're gonna stand in the middle of the carriage with our feet pointing forward, nice parallel legs. We're gonna have our weight back towards our feet and our hands on our bar. I want you to make sure that the wrists are nice and neutral so that we're not putting any flexion into the wrists. We're just gonna take a little cat-cow stretch just to get us going. So I want you to take a nice breath in through the nose as you roll up into your cat stretch, lifting your navel, your ribs, and opening your shoulders gently. Feel the back of the neck open, and then as you extend, lengthen yourself out with a slight bend in the knees. So we're gonna inhale to flex, which might feel a little bit weird, and we're gonna exhale to extend, opening the sit bones, rippling up the spine. I want you to think of the fascia at the back of you opening up from your head to your heels. And then the fascia in the front of you lengthening out from your pubic bone to the top of your head. Let's do one more time. Inhaling up and exhaling to come into that neutral position. Now let's stay in this neutral and we're gonna send our carriage back into our elephant. So extending the legs, pushing away from the hands slightly and maintaining that lengthened position. We're gonna control this for five, keeping the shoulder blades on the back, pressing through the back of the legs. And as I come in, I think about the sitting bones opening and my hips flexing deep into my pelvis. Awesome. So now we're gonna to progress to a little single-sided challenge. So I want you to just send your weight a little bit over to your right leg. And we're gonna just take our leg in the air, the left side up. Now when the carriage pushes back with my right leg, my left knee comes forward. And then we're gonna reverse. As the carriage returns, my left leg is gonna reach back behind. We're gonna take it nice and slow at first just to feel this motion. And feel free to lower down the springs if it feels a little bit too challenging. We're gonna keep our neutral position. So we wanna imagine we're kind of doing a run here. One hip is flexing, one hip is extending. Notice my bottom leg is bending as I return the carriage in so I can keep my pelvis level. Let's do one more. And then I'm gonna come back to center. I'm just gonna shift my weight over to the left just a little bit. And then we're gonna pick up that other leg. So as I push the carriage back, my knee is gonna go in. As I return the carriage, I want you to lean back a little bit towards that back leg so we're not putting too much pressure onto the arms. Reach that leg back, have energy. And focus on keeping the spine neutral as you push and pull. Let's go two more. Reach. One more time. So working our hip flexors and our hamstrings, really waking up, and then come back to center. And let's come down onto our knees. We're gonna go into a little hip stretch here. So we're gonna put our foot on the platform. If you've got a platform extender, Feel free to use it here. I'm just gonna use my wooden platform. And my shin is gonna be resting against the bar. We're gonna be nice and tall through our posture. So in our beginner work, we just practice pushing the carriage away. We're gonna progress from there. So we're just gonna get our hip moving into that hip stretch. 
and a little bit of pushing the carriage away. So very gently and pulling back in. Now I want you to balance this time with your arms out in front and I want you to tilt the pelvis up so that we have to balance, push away, go into hip extension and then knee extension of your front leg so we're nice and controlled. We're just going to do two of these and then we're going to add some rotation to our trunk. So this is where we start to be a little bit more functional. So I want you to turn your palms in towards each other and then I want you to reach the arm forward, same as your back leg going back. So I've got my left leg going backwards, I've got my left arm reaching forward and I'm turning my trunk to the right. I'm gonna focus on that rotation so that I'm crossing over the body. My left shoulder blade protracts as I push the carriage away. Make sure you stay with your hip extensors nice and active. Let's make that the last one and then bring yourself in and let's change sides. So this is a chance to see how our balance is on one leg to the other, how our flexibility is. So just take a moment to settle yourself in here. Make sure your hips are level. We're just gonna do one little thigh stretch here, pushing the carriage back into the hip extension, pushing away from the platform into a little hamstring stretch, and then coming back forward. So I've got my back leg ready, tilt the pelvis up, reach the arms forward. Let's do two where we balance. Check in with our proprioception, our core control. You've got to really concentrate here, keeping the shoulders on your back. So I'm just pushing a little bit more through my front leg. Now we're going to turn the palms in, we're going to add rotation. So my right arm goes forward as my right leg goes back. Protracting that right shoulder blade, coming back in. So this is gonna really give you a deepened stretch in the hip flexor by adding the rotation. So I'm really focusing on the protraction of my right shoulder blade as I extend the right hip. Let's make this the last one. So it's like you're doing a big long run. And release back down, bring the carriage in. Whew, have a little breath. Lovely, so we're gonna come off our reformer just to change our springs, ready to come down for footwork. So I'm gonna focus on single leg footwork. So today I'm gonna do two red and a yellow on my springs. So we wanna do a medium tension at a level that you feel that you can push away with the single feet and maybe it's a little bit lighter for your doubles. So let's come on down. Make sure you have your headpiece up if you normally use it to support your head. And just have a wiggle to get yourself in the middle of the carriage. Feel your pelvis is nice and neutral. And just take a few breaths here just to settle yourself into the reformer. To feel that your sacrum is nice and level on the bed and that you're not too tipped forward or back. Now we're gonna place our balls of the feet onto the reformer and we're gonna push away and just do a few double leg stretches. So a few double footworks just to get us warmed up, get us ready. So this should feel medium to light for you here. But once we go into the single work, you're gonna feel this a little bit more. So I want you to feel that your sacrum melts back into the reformer as your legs extend and that you feel space in the hip joint, the knee joint, and the ankle. I want you to feel your big toe pressing into that bar so we're not rolling to the outside edge. On your next one, we're gonna stay out there. Make sure that you stay nice and stable through your pelvis. Now you're gonna press into one leg, float the other leg up to tabletop without the carriage moving. Inhale to return. Press into that leg. You might need a little wiggle to get that foot in the right position. So I want you to feel you're pushing away from the bar as the other leg extends. Let's do one more on each side. And back, notice your pelvis. Stay in the middle. Now let's move into our single legs. 
Inhale to come in, exhale out. So now that we've felt that top zone, that area where we feel the hip extension, we wanna find that each time. Two more. So I'm just starting to feel those legs really nicely warming up. And we're gonna add the bicycle, reaching forward across the bar and back to that hip extension. I want you to imagine that you're standing on your bar. So how active would this feel if you were standing up doing this? Now we're gonna just add another little arm movement for coordination. So your left arm is gonna go up and back down. So as your knee comes in on the right, your left arm is gonna come up. So we have opposite arm to leg coming in. Let's do one more time and return. Now we're gonna push the carriage away, just we find that middle point again. And we're gonna float the other leg to tabletop. Let's come on in for our singles. Let's go for five. So I want you to make sure at this moment you're just trying to focus on your pelvis, staying in the middle, not leaning to one side or the other, and avoiding any hitching. The leg is deep in your hip. One more. Now we add the bicycle. So we're just gonna work on our leg motion first. Really making sure the quality is beautiful. It's like you're in water. It's fluid, it's elastic, and it feels really spacious in all your joints. So I'm really feeling my leg now. We're gonna add the coordination of our arm. So I'm moving my left leg so my right arm comes up. Whatever leg is floating, the opposite arm comes up. Good, feel that coordination. So we're gonna bring this into the workout today. Last two, last one, and then return back in. Awesome, we're gonna have a little shuffle down. So in our beginner work, we did our nice little bridge with our legs over the bar, just so that we could feel the extension in our hips. So we're just gonna do one here with our heels together, and we're gonna roll up like we would do a normal bridge. We're gonna have the pubic bone angled to the navel, and we're gonna reach over the bar, so we're arcing our legs over. Notice, is your spine in a nice long line? And the sacrum is lengthened, your low back is lengthened, and then I'm just gonna roll back down. Now, we don't hop around the land on two legs. We hop around on one leg. We don't hop. So, we're gonna challenge ourselves into a single leg bridge. Okay, it's gonna be super challenging, but we're gonna go for it. So, I'm gonna melt my leg down into the bar as I pull my other leg in towards me. So we have hip flexion and hip extension. Now don't worry if your pelvis is slightly moving in this position, that's totally fine. I want you to really focus on the thigh going forward and down into the bar. Breathe. We're gonna do one more on this side. Notice there's a little bit of wiggly wogglies. So we're gonna try and control that wiggly wogly and softly back down. That was a bit better. Okay, we're gonna change legs. We're just gonna sit that leg in the hip, have a little moment over that bar so we're not cutting off our knee circulation. And then we're gonna send our thigh forward and over the bar. Now this might feel different, it does for me. So this is a little bit more challenging, a little bit more wibbly. So we're just gonna notice that and we're gonna be aware of it and work through it. And we're gonna get stronger each time. One more. Breathe and release. Okay, now we're gonna wiggle back. And we're gonna take our head blocks down, okay, because we're gonna go into our high bridges now. Now, again, in our beginner work, we started to march. Now we're gonna put things together so we march with a press. So let's go into our bridge here where we can feel the hip extensors, the length 
and the arc of our legs as if our bar is underneath. Now give me a little march. Okay, so this is kind of like we did with our singles, except we're not holding the leg, but I'm pressing down into the bar. Give me one more on each side. One more. And then we're gonna roll gently back down. Now we're gonna remind ourselves of our press and then we're gonna put it together. So we're gonna come into our bridge. We're gonna feel space in the hips and lengthen the sacrum. So feel you're really connected to the back of your legs. Push through your feet, not your shoulders. Come into our long line hover. Then come back into our bridge. Okay, here comes the challenge. We're gonna take our leg up into our march. We're gonna push back that single leg and then we're gonna come back into our bridge. Here we are, back to the bar. Let's do the other side. Take your time, this is challenging. Go back, regress to some of those variations if you're not ready here. And let's do one more on each side if we can. March it up, push the carriage away. Stay connected to your hip extensors. Lift the knee up and out. Last one, you can do it. And up, reaching over that imaginary bar. We're back to the bar. We have a moment there and then we can enjoy the roll down all the way to the floor. And then just hug your knees into your chest. Celebrate your achievement on that because that was super hard. And then release. We're gonna take our arms into the straps while we're here. Now I've still got my, my two red and uh, yellow. If you need to come down a little bit, please do. Okay, we're gonna do our arms and strap. So I'm gonna float my legs up into tabletop. We're gonna arc our arms down and just feel that we're in a nice neutral position here. And then release back up. And exhale, arc the arms. So I wanna feel like I'm really balanced on my sacrum. Notice how my knees are a little bit closer to me rather than being here where they're heavy. Okay, this really helps to stabilize. Now we're gonna do some arm circles. So we're gonna go down. We're gonna turn the arms and really control the arms going back out to the side, back to the top where I still have tension and then control back down. So this is quite challenging for me, having that two red in a, and a quarter, but I really wanna work through my shoulder girdle ready for what we're doing next. Let's just do two more and around. And one more. And around. And then we're gonna reach our arms back up and lower our feet back down. Awesome, so we're just gonna come up and lower our springs. So just roll onto your side. We're gonna change the springs to a red. You might even go a little bit lighter to a three quarter. We're gonna be using one strap at a time for this one. Okay, so this is our unilateral work. So we're gonna come back down. And we're gonna have one arm in strap only. Okay, so what I would have is the other arm just by your side. And then we're gonna float into tabletop. So we've prepped our arms with our little um, arm circles. Okay, so now this is gonna challenge the stability. Now if you find you want more tension, so as I felt that, the short straps are gonna give me just a little bit more tension, and that's a bit borderline, but we're gonna go with it. So I just want you to do three of these, and notice your waist. Is your waist staying level on both sides? Now I'm gonna add the same side leg, single leg stretch. Inhale, back in. Same side leg, challenging that stability. If you wanna add some coordination, you can add the other arm going up. Okay, we're gonna do one more. I'm gonna keep my arm down. 
And then we're gonna go across the body into a little diagonal reach, like our crisscross of our mat work. But we're not gonna lift the head. You're gonna feel your obliques as you reach across to your bent knee. So I want you to feel your shoulder blade coming off the mat. Make sure you're breathing. Reach across, nice and slow, last one. Feel the protraction and rotation. Super challenging. And then lower back down, let's change to the other side. Let's see how our other side is. So this is really about developing our sling patterns. Okay, so let's get that tension in the strap. Float our legs to tabletop. Remember, it's happy tabletop. Doesn't necessarily need to be 90 degrees. Okay, we want the legs in the hips. So let's arc our arm just alone. And already we might feel a difference in sides. Is your waist staying the same length on both sides? Nice exhale. Okay, we add our single leg. So same leg as your arm reaches forward. Think of your single leg that we did on the footwork. Feel like your leg comes from your abdomen, not from your hip. Good, let's do one more. If there's any clunking, ease back on your leg, don't go so far. Okay, let's add our rotation, reaching across to your opposite knee. Inhale back up. So I wanna rotate as I reach. Really pushing and arcing that arm across. So I really feel the obliques. I really feel my shoulder. And one more time. It's a bit more challenging on this side. And then come back in and lower yourself down. Excellent. Lovely, so we're gonna come off of our backs. And we're gonna to come to kneeling on the carriage. I'm gonna keep the red spring, but if you feel like you need more support, then go for a red and a blue or a red and a white so you have a little bit more support for this one. So this is our chest expansion series that we did from the beginner, but we're gonna challenge it a little bit further in a split stance kneeling. So let's make sure our head block is down and we're gonna put our one foot just over the headrest. Now I've got my shin just lightly pressing against the shoulder rest, so I've got a little bit of support. So be very careful here because we're in a little bit more of a vulnerable position as you go to grab your ropes. So I'm gonna walk my arms up just like we did in our tall kneeling position. And then we're gonna come up nice and vertical and tilt the pelvis slightly up. Now I'm gonna go into our little rows that we did from our beginner workout. Try not to do the rib flare that I just did. So as you pull back, I want you to feel that your upper arms are the ones leading the way. My shoulder blades slightly rise so I can get a little bit of retraction in the shoulder blades. I might not be able to look at you while I do this. <laughs> okay, now on your next one, we're gonna keep it here. This is where we're gonna add some rotation. We've prepped this. So my right arm is gonna stay still and my left arm is gonna have no tension on it, but I'm gonna rotate my trunk towards that right side. Then I want you to come back to the middle where you feel the tension in both arms. And then I'm gonna rotate to the left very carefully. This one's harder. And come back. So I wanna pull into that retraction and keep the stability of the one side as the other side reaches and protracts. So this is really challenging my glutes on my front leg. It's challenging my core stability. I'm getting a little bit hot. <laughs> One more on each side. Lift out of that back knee and that's probably just enough that you're gonna wanna change sides. So let's carefully return our carriage back and let's bring ourselves to the other side. Okay, so careful again, before you start moving, you wanna make sure you're nice and stable. So I've got a slight pelvic tilt on my back leg. I'm nice and tall. We wanna make sure we're not hitching in the hips. 
Let's pull those arms back. So we're gonna do the same series. Now we just got the stability on the other side. So a little bit of elevation as the shoulder blades come together. So I'm working my lats, trying to resist pushing my ribs forward, which they want to do. On this next one, we hold it there. We add our rotation. Reach the one arm forward, the one arm stays stable back. And reach and breathe. So the exhale might be really helpful for you. If you're wibbly wobbling, go back to the double kneeling from the beginner and add your rotation and then build it up to this position. We're gonna do one more. And rotate. And come back to center, carefully returning yourself back. And lower those straps down. Have a little moment to go, whew, and then release. Well done, really, really well. So what we're gonna do for our next section is go a little bit lighter. I'm gonna go to a blue spring or a half spring for this section. So this is gonna work a little bit more on stability and core control. So we're gonna come back to kneeling and we're gonna go into the reverse knee stretches. So we're gonna be taking our hands a little bit further forward than all fours on the carriage. You can have your hands flat facing forward or you can wrap them around. It depends on the size of your frame. I'm gonna keep my hands flat. My knees are a little bit behind the shoulder rests and then I want you to be in a neutral spine. So check your pelvis. Just do a little bit of tilting to find where that middle place. Let your ribs go down and up and then find where they hug into your body. Shoulder blades. Retract, protract, find the middle, and then lengthen yourself out so you feel as long inside yourself as you can. Now we're gonna take a big breath in. On the exhale, we're gonna be dragging the carriage in. Now I want you to keep that neutral position all the way through and control the carriage back. So this is gonna be a lot of challenge on our arms, and we're gonna really work into those deep hip flexors. So there's gonna be a lot of abdominal control. We wanna try and prevent the ribs from dropping. So I'm hugging my ribs up. We're gonna do five of these. Breathing out to pull in. So I want you to feel like your, your deep abdominals retract up to pull the carriage in. And then we're gonna have a little break. We're gonna take a little intermission as we bring the carriage back. We're gonna come up and go into a little thigh stretch. Now I want you to feel whether your feet feel more comfortable with the toes tucked under when you come into this high kneeling or whether you feel more comfortable with the feet flat. So whichever one you choose, I want you to feel that you're connecting to the back of your legs, your hip extensors. And then we're gonna take our arms up and go into a little thigh stretch. So we're doing the opposite of what we just did going into some hip extension. We wanna keep a little bit of a posterior tilt and then we're gonna come back up. So the bend is in the back of the knees. Remember your carriage is only on a half spring, so just be careful because the carriage will move easily underneath you. So I want you to feel as if the back of the legs are pushing into the front of the legs. Recall your bridge. This is a bridge in kneeling. So we're getting those knees bent, the hips extended, the core supporting you. Let's do one more. We wanna avoid going into the low back. So we do that by connecting the ribs and tilting the pelvis gently. Okay, come back over. Let's do one more set of our reverse knee stretches. I like to do two sets sometimes so that we really power through this and get a little bit more strengthening. So let's find our neutral position. Let's feel where the shoulders are, the ribs, the pelvis, the head. Take a nice breath out and pull your carriage in. Even though this is a light spring, this should feel challenging. If it's feeling too easy, you're probably pulling from the front of your legs instead of from your deep abdominals. Push the carriage away. Drawing in, nice and slow. Make sure your tail doesn't tuck under or tilt up. 
Last one, you're gonna be working those lats, make sure you're not tensing. That was enough for me. And then slowly guide your carriage back and just have a little shove. All right, we're gonna come off to the side of the carriage here. And we're gonna be going into our, our first standing balance exercise. So the leg that's closest to your carriage is gonna be in front. And we're actually gonna grab hold of that same arm side. So I'm on my right leg and I've got my right arm holding the rope. So I've got my back leg just a little bit behind me, but my thighs are fairly level. So this is our split stance position. What I want you to feel is that your front heel is dragging backwards along the mat. So we're connecting into the back of the legs. Now we're gonna hinge at the hips and lower ourselves down. Now we wanna make sure we have enough tug here, so I'm just gonna move back a little bit. So when my carriage comes right to the stopper, I've still got a little bit of tension. And then I'm gonna stand back up. Let's remember our little row from our kneeling posture. So now all we're adding is a little bit more of a standing lunge. So I'm gonna come down, there's my stopping point. So I went a little bit further this time. And then push through that right leg, pull the right arm. You shouldn't be able to do too many of these. So I'm lunging, notice how I'm hinging slightly. So I'm not doing a, a perfectly upright lunge, like often is done, but I'm imagining I'm gonna pick up something in front of me and then push through that front leg, drag the heel back. Let's do one more. So this feels really, really nice on the body. Feels very strengthening. And then return the carriage in. Now, of course, if that felt too strong, you could go to a quarter spring if that felt better for you. Let's take it to the other side. So I'm now gonna be on my left leg and I'm gonna hold the ropes with my left hand. You'll be able to see this position a little bit more. So I'm in a split stance, tall, and I wanna feel like that left heel is dragging back the floor. The thighs are fairly level. So just angle yourself so you feel comfortable here. So I'm just gonna test if I've got my position right so that when I hinge, there's my stopper point, or at least before, I don't wanna hit my stopper too early. And immediately I feel this side is much harder. <laughs> so lunging down, and then as I push up through that left leg, I'm gonna drag my left heel back. So think about the arm position we did before. We've done some hip stretches, we've done some single leg work, so it's all leading up to this motion. Super challenging, but you will get better running, better walking by doing this. Last one, up we go. Rotate that trunk and then return your carriage back. Amazing. So we're gonna grab our long box for our next section. I'm still on the same springs. This is all our half spring work. It's a little bit lighter, but trust me, you're gonna want it lighter for the second bit of this. So we're gonna lower our bar down and we're gonna come onto the front of our box. Let's make sure those straps are not getting in the way. Our box isn't trapping them. And I'm actually gonna put my chest on the box. So we're gonna grab our straps and we're gonna hold them where you feel kind of the start of tension. So we're going to bring our legs together or hip distance apart. And I'm gonna get my front of the thighs and the front of my pelvis into the box. I'm gonna take my chest onto the box and lengthen my sacrum. So it's really important we take time to get here so that you're not gonna go into your low back. So my upper back is slightly folded over. We've been doing these arm motions where we come up and come into a bent elbow position as we extend. So I want you to allow the top of your shoulder to come up, slightly rotating back and into a little retraction. So I'm in a straight line here, and I want you to see when you get there, if you can come into a gentle extension, eyes, nose, chin, chest, lifting, 
and then you're gonna lower your arms down and return the carriage back. So this is a little bit more functional for the thoracic spine when the arms are able to come up into this nice retraction and then I can lengthen through my legs, through my body. Retract the belly up gently as you do this and then return back down. So this is the same as our beginner work, but it's hard enough. So we wanna master these movements, lengthen out. So I have my navel retracted, my chest expanding, my shoulder blades retracted gently, and then we're gonna progress on from here. So from our high position, bringing our arms up, we're gonna extend the arms and see if we can extend the spine a little bit more Watch the head doesn't pull back. So I'm really working my triceps. Gonna come back into that position and then lower back down. So we're gonna inhale to come up. Exhale to extend. Inhale to see if we can go a little bit further and then return all the way down. So inhale to lift up, find those back of the shoulders. Exhale to extend the arms and lengthen further. Can you hold that position? Lift your belly. My arms are burning. And one more time, if we can, rest if you need to. Up we go into that extension, keeping the shoulders elevated and retracted slightly. We don't wanna depress the shoulders. They don't work that way. And release back down. Amazing. Okay, we're gonna take those straps down. We're gonna beautifully come off of our box. We're gonna check in how we feel. Whew. And then we're gonna put our box away. We've got one more exercise here. So we're gonna finish with our front rowing. Again, we have a light spring. So I'm actually gonna come onto my carriage, kneeling here with my feet in between the shoulder rests. We did this in our beginner work, but now we're gonna challenge it with our single arm. If you can't come down this far, that's absolutely fine. You can get an overball underneath your legs, or you can have your feet on either side on our shoulder rests. So we're gonna have our elbows bent. We're gonna press through the legs and come up. Now this is gonna feel very light, so we have to take our time to be very controlled. Now I'm gonna push one arm forward. So the other arm is just gonna be slack beside me, but then I'm gonna pick up the slack here, and then I'm gonna push the other arm forward. So this is the reverse of what we've been doing the other way around, right? We've been doing lots of rows, and now we've gotta imagine that the other arm is rowing back as this arm is punching forward. Keep the stability through your legs. Your legs are going down, your body's going up. Take your time, breathe. There'll be a little moment in the middle where you might lose your balance, so stay connected here. Stay connected. Let's do one more on each side, everyone. I won't look at you, because then I'll fall over. <laughs> Reach, and up. So hopefully you're with me. Last one. And back in. Now carefully lower yourself down first and then bring your straps back and have a little moment. <laughs> well done. So we're coming near the end. This is the exciting stuff that we're gonna be working into our core, we're getting some standing postures. Not that the other stuff wasn't exciting. We're gonna change to a red spring so we want a little bit more support for these ones. We're gonna be starting with our platform uh, extender on. So I'm gonna be doing a variation of the long stretch but using the platform instead of the bar. Of course, if you don't wanna use the platform, you can bring the bar up and do this exercise as it normally is done. And of course, if you feel like you need more support, then put a half spring or a quarter spring onto that red. I'm gonna try it with the red and see how we go. So we're gonna start in our quadruped position. We're gonna spread our hands out and feel like the center of the hand is really lifted. And then I wanna push the carriage away into my plank. 
So as soon as I reach those legs out, I wanna really connect through the legs and into a slight posterior tilt. So my pubic bone to my navel, I'm pushing through the heels. And then we're gonna push the platform forward, pull over. We're gonna do four of these. I want you to keep your belly retracted up, keep the width through your shoulders. This is really challenging with just that one spring. You don't have to move very far. And then come back in, releasing your carriage down. Now we're gonna challenge it a little bit further by taking it onto the forearms. So if you didn't like the full version, you can always do this one twice. Let's get our feet ready. And we're gonna press the carriage out, reach those legs away, tilt the pelvis. Now I'm gonna work away, and then I'm gonna lift my hips up a little bit, and then come back into the plank. So I'm gonna push the platform, work through my shoulders. This is really hard. I'm just gonna do one more time. Reach away from the platform through those shoulders and lift through the hips and then bring the carriage in and have a big whew, breath out. Nice little shell stretch. Okay, let's stand off of our reformer. I'm gonna bring the bar up. We're not necessarily gonna use it, but we're gonna have it there just in case. And now for this one, because my carriage is slightly higher, I need to stand on my platform so I get the right height for this exercise. We did this in our beginner workout, our scooter variation. So just make sure your platform, whatever you're standing on, that your leg can come straight down from your hip, okay? So I wanna make sure my hips are level. So if you're on a low bed, you might have your knees slightly bent to start this exercise. So what we're gonna do, we did this in our beginner workout. We're gonna hinge at the hips, and then we're just gonna have the bar there so that I can send the carriage back. And then I'm gonna balance. This is the hard part, okay? Now I'm gonna bring my knee in. And as my leg goes back, I'm gonna reach the same arm forward into our little rotations we've been doing all through this exercise, all through this workout. So I'm gonna push the carriage back into that hip extension. Think of the thigh stretch. And I'm gonna rotate my trunk. So the same arm goes forward as my back leg. Left leg pushing, left arm rotating. It's like I'm running. Let's go two. My bottom leg is bent, one, and then release. Whew, should do about five to eight and feel that. I have no idea how many I did, but I'm gonna try and aim for eight on my other side. So, coming into our little standing posture. I'm gonna hinge at the hips, take my leg back, and just have a moment to feel the hip extension here, my front knee bent. And then I'm gonna bring the carriage in, bending the knee, get my arms ready. So my right leg is pushing back, my right arm is going forward. Inhale. And it's not just your arm forward, it's your trunk rotating. So think about how you can stabilize yourself here. If I'm just reaching my arm, Without the rotation, it's not gonna be as stable. Breathe. Okay, keep that stability on that standing leg. Let's go two more. I'm feeling that. You should be really working your glutes and hamstrings on your supporting leg. And then come back in. Return the carriage. Okay guys, we have one more exercise. So we're gonna take our foot bar down. And we're gonna put our platform back up. We're gonna keep this red spring. And because I'm on a high bed, I'm gonna use the gondola pole for my balance. So make sure if you are on a high bed, you are using some support here. So let's make sure our platform is nice and secure. We always stand up on the carriage, making sure we're standing on the supportive platform first, not on the carriage. So we're gonna stand up carefully 
and bring our feet right in the middle, really close to the edge. I'm gonna bring my gondola pole around to the front and we're just gonna do a little squat here. So this is gonna prepare us for our skaters. This is our side split variations. And you can see just the challenge of keeping the carriage in and not letting it push out. So bending and stretching. I'm just using this gondola pole. If you don't have a gondola pole, just reach your arms forward slightly. And come into that squat. Now I want you to keep your weight through your heels. Make sure you have that core control. And we're gonna skate and back in. So my carriage leg pushes straight out and I keep my weight on my platform leg. Now you can see with my gondola pole, I'm starting to rotate. So I want you to feel the rotation of your body towards your platform leg. So I'm rotating to the right, I'm on my right, and I'm pushing back and really feeling the glutes of my left leg. Let's go two more, and one more, and then return all the way back in. Okay, let's carefully transition on your platform to the other side, bringing those legs into the middle of your carriage, standing nice and tall. Let's do a few little squats. Sitting back towards the heels, standing up, bending into the hips, and up. Feeling like your legs go back into your pelvis, not forward into your knees. And let's do one more, holding it there. All right, let's start to skate. Let's just get that action first. Keep your weight on your platform leg. You might be inclined to bring your weight over there, but I don't wanna see that. So it's like you're pushing the outer leg into your, an imaginary wall. Okay, let's add rotation. So if you don't have the gondola pole, you're moving the arms in the same fashion. Reaching around. Think if you were actually speed skating right now and you were pushing off the ice, this is how we would feel. Three and two. So I want eight to 10 of these. One and Come back up. Now carefully step yourself. Use your gondola pole to step yourself off. Well done, hopefully that felt good for you. Just gonna put that back. Let's just take a nice little cool down. So bring yourself so that your feet are just directly underneath your hips. Take a little check in how you feel. You should feel warm, you should feel worked all through your body. We're gonna just take a nice reach up to the sky. And then we're gonna pull one arm down and one arm up. Inhale up, exhale. So kind of like a little mermaid stretch, but more of a decompression of the side of your body. And up, good. And then inhale up and dive forward. Coming into a little roll down, drop the head. Bring your hands to your knees, lengthen yourself out, draw your belly in, feel the hamstrings, and then come all the way back up. Inhale up, exhale, dive forward. Drop the head, roll up onto the knees. Nice little length for your hamstrings. And then push all the way up. Let's finish with just a little hip stretch. We've done lots of hip stuff. Tilt the pelvis, reach the arms, and then just reach back your heels so you get a little calf stretch. And then up, tilt the pelvis, and reach back, reach the heel. Come back, other side. So a little bend in the knee, tilt the pelvis, reach. You can reach the arms to the sky if you want, and then reach back the heel. Up, bend the knee, tilt the pelvis, and reach back the heel and release. Very well done. Awesome if you made it through. Keep challenging yourself and hopefully you enjoyed that workout with us today.
For those of you who want to know what I've been working on today, I'm on the Align Pilates Reformer style A8. This is at studio height, but you can also get it so that you are on a lower height without the legs or a higher height and a rehab style. I've been working with the platform extender, the long box, and the gondola pole for our standing work.